This is about all you need to run a set of fences. And this is a solar charger I showed you earlier. But this charger is much better. Uh, this charger itself has, now the panel's kind of clouded over. And it's got a little button on the back, turn it on and off. Your solar charger is going to be connected to some kind of ground rod. You can connect it to a T-post, but a ground rod is going to be a lot better. This particular system has a panel that could be replaced. Because remember, these are a charger. Or these are a solar panel, some kind of charge controller, and a battery. And now these external wires, you can see that mice have eaten the crap out of them. And, and, and this one's enclosed, so the battery's enclosed inside there. Uh, the big difference is this unit right here doesn't have consumer replaceable components. So the great thing about a solar system is that you can kind of put it together at your scale. You don't have to have all your parts together up front. If you've got a solar panel, a charge controller, a battery, and an inverter, you can have 120 volt power. Now, it depends on how much of a battery you got, whether you're gonna have 100 amps an hour or 50 amps an hour. But the point of it is, um, when it comes to solar controllers and chargers, for goats, for example, um, you wanna be able to replace the units. So this unit works pretty good. I can get probably, I need to rechange this, but I can probably get four or five days of power out of this. Now it does have, it does have the stuff this one doesn't have the stuff to connect to a T-post. That's why it's sitting down here. Uh, we have another controller over there that can connect to a T-post. By the way, these are about $250 each, and that adds up pretty quick. But if something fails, I can replace the battery. I can replace the solar panel super easy. If it's worse than that, I can replace the, the, MP, the MPPT from the manufacturer. But most of the time, your charge controllers don't, don't fail. So the big difference again is this one does not have consumer replaceable units. And this is actually my portable in a spare charger. I'm gonna loan it to another farmer uh, because they just got some pigs, but it works great. It's just gotta be out in full sun. It's gotta have a good four hours of sun a day. And you're only gonna get 24 to 48 hours of, of charge out of it if you have no sun. Where this one for the same four hours of sun a day I get a lot more power. I get a lot more long-term power. I get uh, like four or five days if I have no sun. And we're overcast right now. You can see the clouds are up there. And so, you know, these, these chargers aren't kicking. They aren't going full blast. Um, and that's again, because of the situation that we're relying upon a certain amount of sun hours each day in order to charge that battery. So now, if we're going to do a larger solar system for the house, uh, we're going to have a, a system in place, maybe charging a jackery. We're going to start at the basic level, which is going to be, and this is what my kid runs his laptop off of. It's going to be some kind of pan larger panel. This is a 100-watt panel. I've shown you this in a demo before. Uh, it's probably four years old, maybe. And we've got basically a jackery down here. And we're bringing in, uh, so we're bringing in zero watts. Let me turn on a little bit of draw. Just having an extension cord plugged in will create some kind of draw. Uh, but evidently not enough to show me how much we're getting in on the, on the solar panel. Anyway, this 100 watt panel brings in about 30 to 50 watts um, in charge. And again, it's going to have the same damn problem with with extension cords getting chewed by mice, cord cabling getting chewed by mice, and we're gonna have to deal with that. So so this is a, pa the panel has on the back of it uh, some kind of uh, charge controller or regulator. And basically what's happening here is one panel is linked into the other, and then it's sending that power to this little input plug. And whether or not I'm using the power it's creating, it's creating power. So. If I'm not using the watts that these panels are creating, the panels are still degrading. And so in this particular case here, um, we want to be, if this is at 100%, then that's undersized. It's undersized. I need to have a draw on this to be using the power that the panels are creating. And so I would, best case here, 
is I would have the Jackery for different uses. So I'd have two or three Jackeries and this portable unit will have, now it's not consumer replaceable parts, but this portable unit will have the control, uh, charge controller, the battery and everything like that. Now, the last thing I'm gonna show you is a kit that we put together and we put it together with parts that we literally got from Rural King. Um, you know, ordered some things online. But this, let's see if we got light in here. This is a 1500 watt inverter and it's gonna run this cabin here that we're still putting together. It's got two deep cycle batteries. It's got a, a fuse. Now this is a 30, um, 30 amp system. It's got a fuse. It's got some monitoring on it so we can see that we're, just, uh, we'll turn the inverter on, that we have available to us 179 amp hours. The battery's at 99%. I'm drawing at, a, the battery's at 11.8 volts and it's just sitting here drawing 4.5 watts off of that battery. So your inverters, when they're turned on, are gonna consume power. And so a lot of times we plug everything into a power strip. Now we gotta be mindful, we can't plug more amperage than the system can handle, but we plug everything into a power strip so we can just turn the power strip off and, uh, or we just turn the inverter off. Just depends on how often you're gonna use it. But this system here was probably $250. Um, it, it has a lot of little wiring in it because, Oh, turn the battery, turn it off. It has a lot of wiring in it because it was meant to be put in a box and then off of this box to add the MPP, MPPT controller, the charge controller, which would connect to the batteries and then the inverter would connect to a short, small breaker system. And so we'd be able to run that, uh, to run this cabin at the 1500 watts. I mean, 50, yeah, 1500 watts. Now. 1500 watts is not enough to run a hair dryer. Not that I have any hair that I need to dry, but it is enough to run a rice cooker. It's enough to run a small refrigerator. Um, if I have 3000 watts, I can run an air conditioner, small refrigerator, and then the typical things that you're gonna have in a household. So we have a lot of computers, and so we need to have a consistent 300 watt draw for our computers. That means that when we're taking the batteries down 300 watts, we need to be adding at least 300 watts into the system in order to create equilibrium with the batteries. With that said, if you've got a 300 watt draw, which could easily be an air conditioner or, or um, air conditioner, deep freezer, some basic entertainment stuff, um, you're gonna need more of a system than you can just buy at Rural King. And so one of the things we do when he helps people design their off-grids, um, off-grid cabins, especially in the off-grid cabin program, is that we deep dive into kits. So kits that you could start small and build into, but we're also gonna look into your municipality and see if we can't get you on-grid power. I'm gonna show you one last thing. I gotta chase these ducks off of eating this. I'm gonna put some kind of skirt on here this morning. Why are you eating this? Why are you eating that? Don't be eating that. Okay, I'm sure they're not gonna pay attention, but let me hurry up and get this done so I can uh, put that down here. Okay, so what we got over here is a fence charger plugged into the grid. Now, here's the problem with the fence charger plugged into the grid, is that when we lose power, which last night we lost power three times, so we're connected to the grid, we're connected to national infrastructure, and in the middle of the night, we lost power three times. And so losing power, three times we're see here we're grounded on the t post and we're connecting to a, a, a temporary fence um if you lose power on your fence then your animals can get out in the middle of the night so we have set up a corral system so your solar is not the solution it is a combination of things but we've set up a, a corral system so the animals will go in corrals at night then if the fences lose power because the solar is not going to run miles of fence. It's going to run a couple corrals and you're going to be done. 
the, the, the on-grid connected power is going to run miles of fence. Now, how do we keep that power up 24 seven? Well, we do that by combining on-grid with an off-grid system. And so that container you see in the picture there is actually gonna be where our, our, so I do all these videos. I've got terabytes of video and those go on a network attached storage device that needs to be running all the time. And so we're actually gonna run a 100 amp circuit or service to this container, which will be connected to a 3000 watt solar system, which will be on top of the container the pa solar panels and budget willing we will have enough solar panels to cover the whole top of that container and then that container will have uh 200 300 amp hours of battery and then from that container i'm going to have power available to microgrid these off-grid cabins now again these off-grid cabins are a temporary location we're primarily going to have the same thing we have here we're, we're primarily going to have 30 amps off or 50 amps off and then a little quad ground fault so that we can run our power tools and we can run basics on each of those cabins. Now, will we later put a, uh, a battery powered system in each of the cabins? Probably not because we're sc scoping $6,500 to run the main system for the, for the microgrid. And then if we're running off of that, we're going to run it to like um, Jackeries and EcoFlows and different types of, of portable power systems in the cabins themselves. One of the problems about a solar that they don't talk about in a lot of videos is that uh, lead acid batteries exhaust. So we're going to put a bunch of batteries in this container. We're going to have solar on top of it. We're going to have grid power connect to keep those batteries at charge. We're gonna have solar to keep those batteries at charge. We're gonna have to add another special controller in there to regulate between the two. And then the batteries, if they get stressed, can gas off. Lithium batteries can catch on fire. So if I lose anything, it's gonna be lost inside this container. Now, unfortunately, it is where our servers are and stuff, but ultimately it's a, there are risk factors. So when we talk about our systems here, we're gonna talk about setting up some kind of microgrid environment for your farm. And that microgrid could be central power that then goes out to the corrals so you can run heaters um, in your uh, calfing barns or you can run heaters in a barn or you can run electric fences or you can run um, water heaters to keep the, the water troughs clean. It might be running power and water uh, to your corral system so that you can bring the animals in at night, fill their water up instead of dragging the water all over the property. But it could also mean a pump system and cistern so that you can get water up off the ground so that you can run that water out for the overall watering of animals across the entire property. So whether you have grid power or you have solar power, uh, you're gonna end up having a combination of both. Your remote systems are gonna have solar chargers to run fences, solar chargers to aerate water or maybe even pump water to the, to the animals. Um, but then your base camp uh, is gonna have a microgrid to allow you to run the necessities of running a farm. A modern farm today is gonna have computers. It may even have uh, climate control and monitoring systems. Uh, so like if you had a couple greenhouses set up, you might have uh, climate controlled and regulating systems that keep the temperatures of the greenhouse consistent. Uh, these are things you have to think about. So now when we're gonna do a design plan with somebody, we're gonna sit down and look at those things. We're gonna start with the basics. How do we get you core power, which is probably gonna be some kind of solar system. And then how do we get you at scale, the solar system that will break even or better in less than five years as we're getting you on grid power. So we're, we're in parallel getting you grid power as we're getting you off grid power. And then once we are bringing in that grid power, we want infrastructure power, not simple house circuit. We want enough power that if you're going to put up a barn over next year and you're going to put up a house in the following year and you're going to have a, a, a processing station and you're going to have a workshop, we have to spec all that out in advance so that they don't bring you a circuit that won't allow that expansion. And then when we're looking at uh, 
the solar, uh, if, we're, if we're putting solar on the roof of these little cabins, then we're gonna have a $6,500 system or, or a $4,500 system in each cabin, rather than because the cabins are centrally located, a single $6,500 system. And then we figure out uh, power when these cabins are on location. Again, right now these cabins are here just so we can build them out. Um, and they will eventually go elsewhere on the property uh, for living quarters. That, that middle one will probably be around here for a little bit. Um, but again, we're going to have to jack them up, put them on permanent foundations. Once they're on permanent foundations, we need building permits. But once they're on permanent foundations, we can put nice porches on them and we can expand them out a little bit. Um, or we can sell them all off when they're done and build one big house here. Again, folks, when you're starting a small farm or homestead, the money isn't always available. Even when the money is available, we want to make sure the money is circulating through your economy your parallel economy so that the money comes back and you can uh, essentially upgrade or keep progressing in your overall setup or build wealth and buy more land. But solar is has nuances that are important to having a plan. So if you want to have a, a consulting call, uh, I have some folks I can recommend you to that can do a complete design plan for your entire property. Um, from a project management perspective, I get in there and I start laying out the, the phases. How are we going to approach this? And then ultimately, uh, how do we do it in a cost-effective way? See, when I was designing data centers and migrating data centers, uh, we had to account for the fact that we may not, we may have more power needs than we have availability to get power. Um, so if you end up with an electric car or you end up with a bunch of power tools or a workshop or if you end up with a, a, a few more uh, cabins than you expect it, what is going to be the approach that allows you to budget and achieve that objective? I'm Justin Hit with Prosperity Homestead. If you want to get deeper into solar, we can do that because uh, we still have some systems to set up. And then this, this right here is going to be an off-grid power cube and I'm actually going to uh, have the plans completely available to members of the uh, mastermind program that I'm a member of, as well as private clients and members, because this container should be able to drop pretty much anywhere in the world, set up the solar, plug it in, and run an office, um, because you're going to have the need of computers, you're going to have the need of some place to do your farm record keeping, and then ultimately off of this, you're going to need power for uh, for winter when the animals are nursing and uh, keeping water from freezing, pump, you're running your pump so you can get water. And again, we're going to box it all up in here, whether you have grid power or not, this system will help you get up and running. It can be done in a 10 foot container. It can be done in this, like a 20 foot container like this. Uh, but again, it's a modular system. That's what we're all about. Modular systems, plug it into your farm so that you're up and running quick with a small farm or homestead at break even or better. Thanks for watching. www.prosperityhomestead.org.